My name is Luke Halls. I'm the projection designer for Ugly Lies the Bone. As part of the creative team, I'm brought on quite early on. Uh, we have conversations with the designer and the director about what we're trying to achieve, and specifically for this project, how we deal with virtual reality, VR being a huge part of the play and a part of the experience. My name is Indy Rubersingham and I'm the director of Ugly Lies the Bone by Lindsay Farantino. This is the biggest show I've done with video and projection. It's an integral part to the whole design. So it's also about the Florida world. It's also about the uh, rocket launch. It's also about the domestic. It's a, it's a poetic language through, throughout the whole piece. I'm Ez Devlin. I'm the set designer of Ugly Lies the Bone. I think, you know, a lot of Indu's work was in bringing the piece into this larger space. Um, and I think that's why she asked me to work on the piece with her. Um, was because she knew that to communicate this web of connections between people right up to the back row of the circle, um, you know, it, it did need a kind of gesture, a kind of larger scale gesture. This came from Ez and Ez is, you know, Ez is brilliance of like, you know, creating this sort of dome-like world to which projection and video could work really well with. And here we have home, Titusville, uh, and um, then also on top of this we have uh, the AV world. The piece is about a returning um, soldier who has been facially disfigured and she's come back to where she grew up, to this tiny town, Titusville. Just the pure geography of it actually, just looking at it from above, tells a huge story because it's this place that only exists because of the space program. The actors, when they're in that shape, they feel they're in something that speaks of quite large ideas, but also holds them. What's great about the design of this play, I think, is that it, you've got this big epic landscape and then you've got this very small playing area which is quite hopefully quite claustrophobic and domestic. So you're playing with both the epic and the intimate. So somewhere between the global and the local is what led to this shape. And we found a common denominator, a sort of correlation between the rhythm of seeing products on a shelf and houses in a row. Titusville got drawn. These shapes all got sent into the National Theatre. They took out drawings, CNC cut all of these parts, and then it was a real jigsaw puzzle, and they were in there for months, piecing it together endlessly, getting everything in the right place, making it sure it all lined up. And the critical thing was that for Luke's projection to line up on it, it had to exactly match the model he had built. And every day he said, whatever you do, don't change anything, because I've made, it, I've made all my models in 3D and they've taken weeks. Projection is very good at explaining what she is seeing. So when she puts the goggles on, this bowl becomes a representation of what she's seeing. Part of the play is creating an a ice world, an ice landscape that feels very different from her hometown in Florida. So we created this environment, which is all in 3D and 360. This is the first moment that she opens her eyes and sees this world. So there's quite a lot of work that's involved in this process. So in order to just get to this imagery, we have to take the design, look at the building construction, how it's going to be built. Uh, there's you know, thousands of buildings on this set. Part of that process, we take a scanner that's usually used to scan building sites. We bring it in here and we scan the space. We then can use that data to create a 3D model that enables us to um, directly map a pixel onto a specific area. Part of what Luke was trying to do was map quite specifically onto each building so that he could get the shadows travelling around each building, map the journey of cars. So it being specifically related to one set of drawings, the build and the virtual build, uh, became really important. So this is a really good example of another part of the play which is the, uh, her real world environment. So we've mapped exactly onto each road in the set. Each building is mapped exactly. So this is where we needed the scan data to really get that accuracy.
when it's something that enhances the whole thing, so it enhances the theatrical experience that I love about video and projection. To show her loss in this big world, but she's downstage, so you have her really emotionally close to you as an audience. That's what the video helped showed her isolation and her distance in the world. And when you're in a 900-seater, you're going like, I want to feel like we're in a studio box, and then you want to feel like you're in a big amphitheater. So that was what was really interesting uh, as a creative team, how to create both all those worlds and how to make them mix and move softly and gently between them. I really love to work on pieces where video and projection is written into the story. So it isn't just a backdrop, but is actually integral to the meaning of the play. But ultimately what we are all interested in as theatre practitioners is helping tell a story.